these last few slides deal with discharging employees, but basically how do we fire people? Not layoffs, which is a temporary situation, or a downsizing where it's not really based on uh, bad behaviors on the employee's side, but how do we discharge them because they violate a policy or they just have a long history of poor performance um, and they're not interested in getting better and they don't respond to any training interventions. Um, so we may target individuals who are poor performers as long as we've done a good job of documenting and those become the people that we lay off. Um, and, and discharge. Actually, we technically fire them. We don't lay them off because they're not eligible for rehire. Even though we have employment at will, that doesn't mean that we are protected from firing anybody we want, any way we want, at any time that we want. We always have to make sure that we are not engaging in behaviors that look like we're trying to retaliate against someone or avoid paying benefits to them if they're close to their retirement age or if they're pregnant and on leave. Um, we have to be incredibly careful about how we handle uh, discharging employees. So it is helpful um, when you're developing your uh, layoff policy or your firing um, uh, if you're going to fire somebody, to have a severance agreement that says you will get this amount of money in severance and by taking this money you release, um, uh, you relinqu relinquish your rights to, to sue us if there's any problems. And so this way you make sure that you are protected so they don't come back and, and accuse you of discrimination at a later date. If you accept that severance agreement, that means that you agree that you won't sue them later. Um, employee releases are most often used when a company does not have a proper documentation to fire an employee, but they want to end the relationship. So you can say, I need to let you go. I don't have, maybe I don't have any justified reasons. I just don't think you're fitting in with the company right now. And here's a release. I will pay you two months severance if you go away. And you can do this. Sometimes people might fight back and negotiate, this is not your best plan, let me tell you. This is your worst case option if you realize that you have not done a good job documenting poor performance and you know that this person is going to have some leverage to be able to say, you can't fire me because I have always been a good employee or you've always have it on the record that I'm a good employee. Um, so it is important that you make it clear that um, this is your last resort when you're trying to get rid of someone. This is not something that you like to do regularly. This would be a rarity uh, in my mind. Um, to be effective, the release needs to include some sort of consideration. Usually money that goes above and beyond your standard severance, which is usually about two weeks. You might say, here's two months pay. You know, um, So you have the right to, um, to, to offer that. And again, if they accept the money, then they waive the right to sue you at a later date for other problems. Um, it's certainly possible that they could change their mind and then they might want to continue to negotiate it, whatever, um, be prepared for this. But this is, again, this is not a, it's not a popular practice. It is not your practice of first resort. This is what you do at the last possible minute when you have somebody that there may have been some issues and how things were handled and your goal is simply to get rid of the person because they are disruptive to your company or it's just not working but you fear there may be some legal hang-ups uh, and being able to let that person go and so your goal is to in essence, you know, have an out-of-court settlement in advance of any kind of court issues. Um, you're paying them in advance, asking them to leave, and saying, if you agree to leave, you don't sue us, we'll pay you, and we'll both walk away, you know, happy as, happy as can be. Um, again, not, it's a common practice, but it's not something that you should do um, out, of the, out of the gate. It doesn't, excuse you from doing a really good job of good documentation, good performance management, good performance improvement plans, whatever that takes. That should always be your first resort. But the, as last resort, if you haven't done that or if there are other, some other issues that are unforeseeable, then you want to use this kind of uh, agreement to, to help get somebody out of the company if you don't have the ability to do a, a normal layoff or um, you don't have good documentation. Uh, to support a firing.
there are many common termination errors and one of the first ones and the most common ones is doing it publicly or basically you're sitting in a room there's a whole bunch of people someone pisses you off and you turn around and go you're fired I'm done with you get out of here doing it publicly is embarrassing and that can come back to hurt you um, the next thing is writing a positive letter for someone who is terminated for cause you can be um, as we talked about in the legal lecture about negligent referrals or negligent hiring, um, you can, if you refer someone you know as a poor employee and they've done something for cause, they stole, they embezzled, they sexually harassed someone, and you got rid of them, yay you, that's great. But if you're writing them a positive letter, then you're referring them as somebody that you highly recommend. And if you if you fired them for cause, why would you recommend them? So don't agree to write a letter of reference for someone who you are firing for cause. Um, you need to reserve the right to be able to say they are not eligible for rehire, we would not hire them back. Um, another common error is trying to document a termination for a just cause case that doesn't exist. Um, so if you don't, um, you know, if there's no documentation uh, involved, if, if there really isn't a just cause to fire somebody, making it up is not going to help you. Um, you shouldn't fire an employee after a merit raise or a favorable performance review where you say, oh, you're a great employee and now, now I'm going to fire you because that looks really bad. It looks like you're retaliating for something. Um, another error, stating that the person conducting the meeting disagrees with the termination because if that happens, then there is, the person has recourse to go to court and say, this person doesn't think I should be fired. Obviously this is retaliation for something else and it opens up a legal, um, uh, legal problem for you. Um, Juries do not look favorably on terminations that were done at the end of a work day or a work week after the, or after an employee returns from a business trip or the beginning of a holiday. So if you're going to fire somebody at the end of a work week, why didn't you fire them at the moment that there was a problem? Um, if you fire them at the end of the work day as opposed to when the event occurred, you should do it then. So juries will look at that as a planned, intentional um, reason to fire somebody, perhaps there, there may be some other reasons embedded in why you're letting them go. Um, so you have to be incredibly careful. If someone um, has a, uh, if someone has done something wrong, you bring them in, you discipline them right away, you follow your disciplinary plan, and when you are aware of that there's a problem, you bring them in the office right away and you take care of it right away. You don't wait till the end of the day, you don't wait till the end of the week, you don't wait till, well, we'll just wait till we come back from our holiday break or right before break, that doesn't work that way. In terms of managing termination, um, there are a number of things that, um, rules of thumb that you should follow for yourself in terms of how you conduct yourself. Number one, be impartial, be calm, be in control. Never ever tell the person that you disagree with the layoff or the, or the firing. Um, you are representing the company and the company has made a decision about the firing and you need to follow through on that. Um, listen to employee requests for severance terms, okay? But you don't have to agree to it. You can say, thank you, I, I'll take that into consideration, and we'll get back to you about that. Don't ever make a, a, a commitment in a meeting that you will or won't do something. Always bring it back to your attorney, bring, bring it back to your boss to make sure that the decision um, is agreed upon by those who, are, who are, will be opening up their purse strings and, and making the payment out. We certainly want them to feel like they're heard. We don't want them to feel like they're not being heard, but we don't, also don't want to commit to something that we're not going to end up paying for in the end because that can come back to hurt us legally. Don't send mixed messages. All right? um, recognize that people, when they're being fired, there's a buzzing that goes into their ears, metaphorically and actually literally. Um, they don't hear everything that you tell them because they're busy processing this information. I've lost my job. I don't have a job anymore. What am I going to do? I got a bill. My baby's due next week. You know, all these things that enter into their head. So you may have to repeat yourself. You may have to keep your language simple. You should put things in writing and be talking through the written document and give the person the written document so they can take it home with them and read it and absorb it later. Um, you may have to have this conversation with them again in the future. But it's important um, to repeat yourself often to make sure that the message gets through 
that they're getting fired, why they're being terminated, and what they can expect in terms of outcomes. Don't give them career advice. If you're firing somebody, fire them, okay? You're not giving career advice at this point in time. You're not a counselor. You're not their friend. You having to make a hard decision about ending an employment relationship, which is never easy. Do not give them career advice. If the person is being terminated, don't say they're being laid off because laid off implies that they can come back, all right? And that's not what you're telling them. Um, when you are terminating somebody, you are terminating their employment without the option to return to the company. And that needs to be the clear language that you use when you're telling people that. Um, you also lastly want to make sure that the meeting is in private at a neutral location, typically in a conference room where the door can be closed, and hopefully where there's no um, um, windows where people can look in on what's going on. So we want it to be private, we want it to be neutral, um, we don't want it to be in the big boss's office, et cetera, et cetera. So it needs to be in a neutral location. The last few termination tips, um, deliver information without engaging in an argument. This is not a negotiation about whether or not they're going to be fired. They are being fired. Clearly, if you've done your due diligence in advance, you've got your research done, you've got your documentation done, there should be no debate about what's happened, why it happened. We're sticking to the facts. We're, we're letting you go. And here's the information that you need to know. If you are uncomfortable with that, make sure that you've got good notes. So take notes, know what your talking points are, and check off things on your list to make sure you've covered everything that you're supposed to cover. Don't make promises. Um, don't say um, this is a mistake. Don't ramble aimlessly. Stick to your talking points. Don't add anything extraneous and move on from there. Let them know when the effective termination date is, what the severance package is, any kind of details that may be involved in that, how much money they can expect, if anything. If they're being fired for cause, they may not get anything. If they have an employment contract, though, that has a severance package written into it, they may be eligible for that severance package, and you have to make sure that you review the, any contracts that might exist for that employee to make sure that you are within the boundaries of that employment agreement, whatever that is. Make sure everything you give to them is in writing, as I said what their severance expectations are, when their termination dates are, all those details in writing because people aren't really listening deeply when this sorts of things happens. Make sure you're aware of legal compliance issues, um, that you are not using, well, you were pregnant, this is your third child, so therefore I'm going to lay you, I'm going to, I'm going to terminate you because you're never here. That is a lawsuit waiting to happen, right? Or you're too old, we don't want you here anymore, you're too lazy, you're too fat, you're too whatever. Whatever the terminology is, be careful of any sort of legal compliance issues that you are abiding by the law. Make sure you run it by your attorney first before you make that decision. Make sure that you have an accurate record of the interview, even if it means you had to record it and you got their permission to record it. Make sure you provide a copy of the termination interview details to the employee. This is what we agreed upon in this, terminal, this termination um, uh, meeting. This is what we can expect, etc. Make sure that the person hands back their identification cards and their keys. And while you're in that termination meeting, their internet access is being cut off so they cannot access emails, any um, privileges that they have in terms of getting into technology, technology systems, back office stuff that you may not think about. Make sure all possible ways that they can get back into the system is cut off right away, that their privileges are revoked. Um, let them know uh, where to hand in their keys and where their final paycheck is. Um, if you need to have security involved, make sure that the company security um, is there to help you escort the person out. Um, and after discharge, make sure all relevant parties are aware of the termination, including coworkers, bosses, subordinates, etc., etc.